fuck, hang on, I'm on the wrong page. fucking patronize me. that rippled through the tall grasslands like the uninvited breath of the stranger's hound on the exposed leg beneath the outdoor cafe table. <laughs> Consider your fingertip, spake Beryl, and onward she spake. Your fingertip, your fingertip is currently harboring tens of millions of living organisms. Just the tip of your finger. Consider that for a moment. Now consider that your entire body is home to 100 trillion non-human cells. Each of you carry around 4.4 million non-human genes. 90% of who you are is not actually who you are. <laughs> Her words rang out across the valley. Microbes, my brothers and sisters. I'm a talking about microbes. <laughs> now, consider your fingertip is planet Earth and the rest of your body is the surrounding universe. Allowing for the limitless possibilities that that presents, given the choice, would you doom your species to evolutionary stagnation on the tip of a finger? Or would you prefer to see some really fucking cool shit? <laughs> cool shit? Fair enough. <clears throat> I had a, um... <laughs> a really, a really fucked up thing... Stay with me. Stay with me. A really fucked up thing happened to me on this missionary tour. Um, I had a near-death experience. Recently, actually, quite recently, I genuinely nearly died. And what happened was I nearly died from food poisoning, which is a bullshit way to die. <laughs> what are people going to say about me when I'm gone? Ah, oh, yeah, well, he always did make poor menu choices. <laughs> what happened to me was I ate something funky in that giant food court at that massive shopping mall where all the obnoxious bogans go and they're really rude to the staff. You know the big fucking mall, what's it called, the really big one? Westfield. No, not Westfield, the other one. What's it called, the massive, the people are asshole. you know? No, not that one, fuck, what's it called? Bali! It's called Bali. <laughs> so I was in, <laughs> I ate something in Bali, right? And um, it disagreed with me to the point that I got salmonella. And it was so serious that I got an abscess on my spleen and had to have my fucking spleen removed. I know. If you don't know what the spleen does, by the way, it filters your blood and it helps in the fight against nasty bacteria. It's kind of like the organ equivalent of a nightclub bouncer. You don't really need it and no one really likes it, but if it's not there, someone's gonna get their dick out on the dance floor. <laughs> I was in hospital for about six weeks, just laying there. Six weeks! Just contemplating my own mortality when a single thought struck me with absolute clarity. I'm just a temporary microbe made up of other microbes on a planet of microbes in an ever-expanding universe of microbes. Suddenly I was an empty shell open to limitless possibilities. All I needed was a sign. And that's when the old man in the bed next to mine turned to me and died. 
<laughs> and while rifling through his possessions, I found a book of daily Buddhist meditations. And I turned to that day's date and it said, each morning we are born again. And I looked at him and said, not today, Grandpa. <laughs> not today. But it planted a seed, right? And I was already kind of into Buddhism, but this led me to get deeper and deeper into Buddhism. I had dabbled previously. I've spoken about it on stage before. But after this, I became quite devout. I had a, a, a meditation practice every day, a daily gratitude practice. Um, I went to Myanmar and slaughtered thousands of Muslims. <laughs> you know, just trying to be a good Buddhist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they lost a few karmic points when they started dabbling in genocide, didn't they? But I did... I did genuinely, I did go and stay in a Buddhist temple uh, up in Japan, up in the mountains of Koyasan for a couple of weeks. And I got up every morning at like 5 a.m. and I prayed with the monks. Um, and then I go back to my little room with its tatami mats and its simple, spiritually mindful design. And I would masturbate to internet pornography. <laughs> and I thought, this experience may be lost on me. <laughs> This, this, this is not connection. This is total isolation. What are they doing? Like, what the fuck am I doing? What is this? I mean, what are we as a species? I mean, when did we lose faith in ourselves and decided that it was more fun to own everything than take care of it? Let's face it, humans were never meant to be dominant. It doesn't make sense. We don't know how to behave at the top of the food chain. We didn't earn it. You think lions and crocodiles have existential crises? No, they just move quick, get strong, eat shit. They don't have time to, they don't have time to jerk off in a temple, right? <laughs> and before you say, I'm more disciplined than you, Randy, I'm not like that bullshit! You all wank in your own temples. <laughs> Humans evolved to be in the middle. That's why we're so bad at running things. We've got two million years of chemical evolution telling us to run away from everything or stab it to death or fuck it in the ear. <laughs> Beryl gave us the opportunity for enlightenment and we fucking wasted it. We lost our way. And if you don't believe me, look around you. Look at this room, room full of magnificent creatures with limitless potential for symbiotic compassion and spiritual perfection, paying good money to see a man that's dedicated the best years of his life into finding a way to monetize screaming at strangers. <laughs> I mean, fucking look at my face. What are you even watching right now? And what the fuck do I have to show for this? Fuck all. 38 years old, no partner, no kids, no assets, no savings. The most expensive thing I own is an autographed copy of George Michael's Faith on Cassette Tape. 